Not bad. Yeah. I knew something terrible was happening. Now you don't know anything of the sort. Now no. just take a deep breath and... Mm, what's that? Calico beans all blood dry. <laughs> Damn it! I'm sorry. It's just I'm so worried. You've been so good and I've been such a nuisance all day. I haven't been a nuisance at all. Now just leave the sauce with the soap and come sit down. He was here for about, uh, about ten minutes. When he'd gone, I went up to her room with a cup of tea, but she wasn't there. I looked in the sitting room, not that I expected her to be there. It's so cold that the fire never been lit, but we almost never use it. I looked in the consulting room, thinking she might be reading one of Philip's books. I went upstairs again to check our room, Clive's, the spare room, the bathroom, and, and both the lavatories, but she was nowhere in the house, absolutely nowhere. Well, you looked outside? Yeah, the potting shed and the garage, but she had completely disappeared. Yes, but she might just have gone for a walk. Oh, oh. I really don't think you can assume that she's been... in the state she's in, I am just terrified what she'll do. Now, look. The girl is clearly in a great state about something she did a year and a half ago. And what she desperately needs is a calm and reassuring atmosphere, not you worrying yourself sick every time she goes out the door. That's better. What did the police have to say? Well, they, they took her particulars and said they'd keep a lookout for her. Mm. I also telephoned the Commandant to her. I asked for a message to be given to Major Richter. Oh, Bear Stricter, I was told. He's been promoted to colonel, it seems. They were a bit stuffy and said I should deal with the civil police. I said that I had, but there were only 30 of those against several thousand of them, so would they help, please? You think I shouldn't have? Well, I was just wondering how she might react if one of them should approach her. Oh. If you see what I mean. Oh, I don't know. I only knew that if she wasn't found soon, something terrible would happen. Captain Foster Smythe, I'm trying to suggest troops with dairy produce requires a hell of a lot of pasture. Land which cannot be used for growing root crops. But cattle are not exclusively there for German use, as you very well know. Half of them are. More than half of them. Since there are now as many of you on the island as there are civilians. If you're going to complain about the food, you shouldn't have come. This is intolerable. I am trying to help, and all I get in return is unwarranted abuse. You've requisitioned 20 tons of winter vegetables per month since December, and are insisting on increasing it to 70 tons a month in the spring. That sounds more like plunder than help. May I remind you our demands for the winter were originally for 50 tons a week, and it would reduce that figure by 60% at your request. Because your original figure couldn't possibly be met, and you know it. Do you know what the civilian ration of potatoes is? Of course, seven pounds per person per week since the ration was introduced on the 8th of December. And do you also know how much has actually been available? This is entirely incidental. Apart from two pounds each in Christmas week, nothing. That's how much. The ration is theoretical. People queue for hours for a few parsnips or turnips while you commandeer what you want. There are poor people, particularly in a state of semi-starvation. There is a finite amount of... Do you a way of utilising private gardens and wasteland, not a wholesale change in farming policy. Well, what private gardens? Nearly all the houses with large private gardens have been requisitioned for your troops. Oh, rubbish. There's a thriving industry in back garden produce. Pigs, goats, rabbits, poultry. I am saying that organised on proper official lines, this could make a significant contribution to food supplies. Well, if that's the case, why interfere with it? Leave well alone. I said organised on proper official lines. That does not mean into the black market. <laughs> black market? Prosecutions are running at the rate of one a week for the illegal slaughter of undeclared livestock and trading in illicit produce. Your methods of growing and distributing food are inadequately organised. Your board for the management of glasshouses operates at a permanent loss and is a drain on state finances. And what has that to do with the question of marginal food production, or shouldn't I ask? It is a further example of inefficiency. Which would never be allowed in the Third Reich. I am not prepared to listen to sarcasm, nor to having every reasonable suggestion I put forward rejected out of hand. You will supply me 
with the number of pigs over six weeks old notified to the Farm Produce Board as being in domestic ownership so that I may discuss the matter with our own agricultural advisor. You don't You see... have 24 hours in which to produce this information. Good afternoon, Major. Good afternoon, Captain. And how is your weekly encounter, Captain Foster's mind? It really is quite impossible. The damn man is just a pettifogging bureaucrat. Is England full of such people? If so, thank God the Fuhrer didn't invade them. Why did they elect him to the controlling committee? At least with Dr. Martel, you could discuss the problem. With this man, it's always a total lack of cooperation. Hey, what's this telephone message? I've just seen Mrs. Martel. Oh, Pluger knows about it. Yeah, Is Orville Lightning Kluger in his office? Ask him to come along here. But there's another message there from the General's ADC. Milo wants 12 of his HQ officers to be invited. Have you seen this? I have. In addition to himself in his ADC. Plus an equal number from here. And the cream of local society. Why did you agree? I most certainly did not agree. I was left no choice. The Herr General wants a civic reception for himself and his young officers, and he's determined to have one. Only one problem. The cream of local society don't know him and don't want to know him. Indeed, they don't want to know us. Not desperately surprising. Under the circumstances, I wouldn't want to know us either. Overcome their resistance, he said. Let them see the kind of people we are, he said. Be good for them, good for us. Aren't those his words? His very words. Yes, well then. Well, you did demur, did you not? Demur? What kind of word is that? Oh, hesitate from uncertainty. Yes. And I bloody well did hesitate from uncertainty. Did it do me any good? It did not. The general still wants his reception, so what am I to do, huh? I honestly don't know, Dieter. Uh, I raised the subject with Mrs. Martel. I said, the Commander-in-Chief is desirous of being received socially. She replied, I would already know the answer to such a proposal, and she did not wish to say more. So there we are. The Herr General will not be received socially by the islanders, and frankly, does that surprise us? Now, Otto, what's this message from Mrs. Martel? Yes. She spoke to the Stubbsfeld Rebel, and in your absence, he passed the message to me. It seems that Mrs. Martel and then took the liberty of seeking your assistance, Herr Oberst. I've asked the Feldgendarmery patrols to keep a lookout for her. This is to certify that Miss Claire Martel is suffering from acute depression and is for the time being unfit to attend to her affairs. Is this genuine, Dieter? Oh, yes, I'm sure it is. Shall I ask a Stubbsfeld rebel to take her name out of the fortress tomorrow? Yes, I think you'd better. Richter. Yes, well, what is it? Well, under what circumstances? I thank you. The girl has been taken unconscious from the sea. But God, yeah. Mum's here. Everything's all right. All I want is a little time to be quiet. Quiet. You can be. At home, you can be. 
That's all he wanted. Daddy? Peter? <laughs> I had a bunch of flowers for the memorial tablet. Captain Ralph Porter's own sheep. 56 Squadron, Royal Flying Corps. And it was hot outside, and in the church it was cool and clean. And the German was there. Oh, don't think about that now, darling. He looked round, and at first I didn't see his face. That's all over. It's in the past <laughs> now. Well, what do you want? I said, a stable for your horses. This is the Church of England. So may I not come, he said. sister and I'm going to keep her in overnight. I should leave her be now. She's exhausted. I'll fetch her in my car tomorrow. Come on. I'll take you home. Thank you for calling me. You should have cooperating satisfactorily. Yes. Yes. I'm glad. Thank you for coming. You've been most kind. I'll take Mrs. Martell home. Good day. Good day. Excuse me, may I be allowed to see Miss Martin? She's not to be disturbed. No, of course not. Then you may. Thank you. Briefly. saw Clive. So I had to. I had to. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you, John. Hmm. Waiter. I don't know why you let the bastards in. I couldn't stop them. If I could, they'd only close the hotel. A couple of dozen more people out of work and profit from that. Drop dead. <laughs> Do you know what the Emperor Charles V said? If he's anti-German, I'll buy it. I speak Spanish to God, Italian to women, French to men. And German to my horse. <laughs> oh, bloody horse. <clears throat> Here. If I bring in some more meat, can you cut it up for me? When? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh. You're going at some. While the opportunity exists, take it. Next week it might not. Dr. Forbes has given me a list of people most in need. Does he know what you're up to? He didn't want to. I'm not surprised. Are you feeling cold feet? No, I'm not. But I sometimes wonder if it's worth the very considerable risk. You're an appointed representative of the people. It was bad enough when Martel was sent to prison. If it happens again, the Germans will trust no one. Don't worry. I've got it all worked out with B. Charlotte's coat stall. All I need is for someone to cut the stuff up into convenient <coughs> Do you have to deliver it personally? Isn't there some way they can collect it? Would you like them queuing up outside? Hardly. Well, then, look. I've got the car for official business and a permit which says so. Don't 
You're not going to question me about what I'm doing or where I'm going. Look, all it needs is for someone's neighbor to think they're missing out. A quick call to the Commandant Tour, and they're right on to you. And what do we do? Let the opportunity of doing a bit of good simply pass by. All I'm saying is it needs just one person with a sense of injustice, and you're in victory. Mm -hmm. hold us. May I offer you a drink? Mm, thank you. What? The same. We have us there somewhere still neutral. Ah, it'll soon be spring in Paris. Soon be spring in Guernsey. You prefer it here? Too much crime in Paris, too much intrigue. Ah, Otto. I thought you were a hungry detective from Hamburg. I've been spoiled. Thank you. Yes, I expect we all have. I wonder how much longer it will last. You think it won't last? I said I wonder, which is to speculate idly it's as far as I'm prepared to go in the matter. I understand. Mm. Do you? This is excellent. How was the Martell girl, sir? I think she'll be all right. This time? It was deliberate. It seems likely, yes. It's funny, isn't it? Well, scarcely the word I would have used. No, I mean, uh, at Corbière. What? Corbière. The e-boat found his body off Corbière. His body? The Stuka pilot, you remember? The one with the badly burned face? Kessler. Langton Kessler. On the Knight's Cross in the Polish campaign, had a death wish for what he'd seen and done. Mm, summer of 1940, wasn't it? A couple of weeks after we'd landed. Couldn't stop talking about it over lunch. Sunday lunch. That was the last time we saw him in the mess. Couldn't get it out of his mind. Bombing the Polish cavalry, falling back over the Vistula. Yes. All those horses, he said, on the road to Ostrovich. Yeah, I wrote to his squadron commander in Abbeville, wasn't it? There was something about his post-mortem. Death was due to drowning. He'd entered the water whilst unconscious from a blow to the head, consistent with having fallen onto a rock. But the injuries to his head were not extensive. Not what you'd associate with someone throwing himself off a cliff. Much more as though he'd stumbled and fallen a short distance and been knocked out. That doesn't alter the finding of accidental death. No, no. Of course not. Still, as you say, funny about Corbier. Time it is, Mr. Foster Smythe. Come, Will they be here in a few minutes? Yes, I know. Don't worry. Come on. Do take some risks. We all do. Come on.
Better get rid of that in short order. How on earth do you manage it? From under their very eyes. Well, almost. Well, they start to wonder where their meat's going. Probably. They haven't rumbled it yet. And when they do, we shall have to think of another way. I'll have some more tomorrow. Be careful. If they want to be gamekeeper, okay, I'll be poacher. And poachers never get caught. You're sure of the figures? I've seen the manifest. Five carcasses in a week. Hind quarters mainly, 50 kilos each on average. Very easily manageable. Surely they guard the stuff. I mean, that must be getting on for a company's rations. When it is offloaded from the ship, it is checked. It's transported to the cold storage depot, checked. And then when it's issued to the various units, it's checked again, both by the unit victualling officer and by the storemen. Is there any means of identifying it? Well, of course, they, whoever, would remove these first thing. Collusion involving our people? I don't think so. Too many involved. Too risky. A break-in? I can't see it. It's a refrigerated building constructed to minimize heat loss. It has several rooms, no windows, and only one door, the key of which is held by the manager. But could it be him? I don't think so. Uh, it is the civilian coal store as well, of course. It has to be. There's nowhere else. And he is an islander. But the store's detail is on duty all the time that he is there. So I don't see him. Well, how. it certainly can't go on. It won't, uh, my own. My own. You get it. What's this? Wrapping from frozen carcass meat. I'm sure Reinecker will be only too happy to put the weight of the SS behind this investigation if you ask him to. Eh? What investigation, my own? Meat being stolen from the cold storage depot. Not my province, I'm afraid. Anyway, this morning, I'm otherwise engaged. I'll bring your toast in a minute. Thank you. You always sniff the coffee? Good morning, Herr General. Good morning. It seemed a, a prudent precaution, although they're pretty reliable here. I had an aunt who used to stay in Baden Baden in a place like this. Damned if I know how they can keep going. They still manage a meal of sorts, a decent bottle of wine. Not much civilian custom. A bit expensive for them. The exchange rate is in our favor. Moreover, the manager does his best to make us not unwelcome. Knows which side his bread is buttered. Some coffee, Herr General? Thank you. Uh, that's, of course, but quite drinkable. Ah, thank you. I took the liberty of ordering some toast. No preserves? No. Or sugar. I can let you have a couple of second hand tablets. I don't think so, thank you. Yes. You're a Guernsey girl? Yes. Worked here before the war, did you? Before the occupation, I did. Must seem very different now. Well, they do say you can get used to anything. <laughs> Pert. But pretty. Shall you uh, put in your own milk? You married, Ranica? No, sir. Pity you'd make someone a damn fine wife. Ah, good. They've managed a bit of butter. What I said. Sorry? They know which side their bread is buttered. Yes. Well, Ranica, what have you got to say to me, eh? And why do you consider it better done here than in my office? Is it to spare me embarrassment or to spare you embarrassment? 
Neither, Hagen Aral. That would be to overstate the case. There must be some truth in it, or he wouldn't be sitting here like a couple of old maids drinking air sat coffee. It is a question of embarrassment for us all, I think. And that is why, well, one of the reasons, anyhow, I sought a discussion here uh, rather than at your own headquarters. Very well, Sturmbahn Fuhrer. So much for the preliminaries. Now, what do you have to say to me to spare embarrassment for us all? What would you say, Herr General, is the biggest non-military threat to our presence in these islands? You tell me. Cohabitation. You mean fraternization? No, Herr General. I mean cohabitation. All the subtle accommodations arrived at between two sets of people forced to live together. Fraternization is the deliberate cultivation of friendship between people who nevertheless acknowledge a basic antagonism. In opposition, they seek a common ground. The effect of cohabitation is to remove the opposition. And why is that bad? Because we are at war, Herr General. And the circumstances here are seductive. We can port ourselves in a casual fashion as though the war were over and won. The war is far from won. We have become slack and complacent. Is this the considered opinion of the SS? It is, Herr General. Because that is how you have reported it. Because that is how I have seen it. You have represented these views to the Commandant. The Commandant is a civilized and humane man. I see. So, over coffee and buttered toast, you would have me stiffen our resolve. You could have said this in my office. Some more coffee, Herr General? Thank you. You have proposed to Obes Richter a reception. Uh -huh. To which are to be invited leading civilians. What of it? Uh, with respect, Herr General, I have been here since the beginning. I know the temper. To do as you propose would be to invite rebuff. That would not be good. It would not be politic to lay yourself open to such a thing. You take a lot upon yourself, Sturmbahn Führer. It is my duty. But not to me, you are not of my staff. Not of the regular army. That is true. But you are the Third Reich in these islands. An insult to you is an insult to Germany. And to the Führer. Just as you say. Major Reinecke, didn't expect the pleasure of you today. Herr General, this is the manager, Mr. Pierre Messerve, General Muller. We are very honored. Everything to your satisfaction, gentlemen, within the obvious limits. Perfectly, thank you. Thank you, dear. How old are you, Reinecke? 33, sir. Young for a Sturmbahn Führer? It has been my good fortune. To be in the right place at the right time, saying the right thing. Thank you for coffee. You are right to propose such a meeting and in such congenial atmosphere. Agenaran? Everything all right? Perfectly, miss. The bill, please.
the same store's detail. A Feldfable, a Gefreiter and two men has been on duty the whole time. But there is no suggestion that any of them has been dealing in stolen food. How can you be certain of that? The disposal of such a large quantity for cash would be difficult to conceal from their fellows. Always supposing that their fellows would tell you. One knows when the truth is being evaded, Oberleutnant. Yes, yes, I suppose one usually does. And yet, 250 kilos of meat have disappeared. And you can find no evidence implicating the store's detail. All right. Let us assume that the store's detail is not implicated. How the hell is it done? I suppose they are there all the time. Yes, Oberleutnant. From just before seven in the morning. And the stores are locked at 1700, and the guard is set until curfew. That is correct. Well, it can't happen after curfew. Any civilian will be picked up immediately. You say the store's detail is there before seven in the morning? They are scheduled to be there a quarter to seven. Hmm. What if the manager arrived before them? That is hardly possible. Curfew does not end till 6.30, and he has a 15-minute bicycle ride to get there. I see. And, of course, also he would have to arrange with someone with transport, a uh, horse, a cart, a wheelbarrow. <laughs> no, no. The time is too narrow for such a thing. Unless, Herr Oberleutnant. Unless what? Unless the detail has got into the habit of arriving late. Just five or ten minutes would be enough, eh? All right. From tomorrow, Unterwachtmeister. We will watch and we will see. She hasn't eaten anything. Well, it can't go on like this. Her appetite will come back. It will take time. Well, she hasn't eaten anything for several days. I mean, she's as thin as a rake. It's almost as if she's trying to... It's so bloody selfish. She's sick, Molly. She needs help. Yes, well, I'm sorry. It's a dreadful thing to say, but with one thing and another, I'd like just to be able to give up. Well, that just isn't possible. Well, what does one do? I mean, is there no end to it? One copes with them when they're tiny and tries to deal with their problems when they're older, hoping all the time that you're making the right decisions for them. Worrying your being too lax or too harsh. Hearing about other people's children coming to grief when their parents seem so sensible and fair. Clive refusing to go to university and, and, and going in with that awful Teddy Lopez and messing about with motorbikes. And Claire being so moody and difficult. Well, one copes as best one can with all that. At least you can understand all that. And there's no, no contact. When you don't know, when you, you just don't know what you're supposed to do or not to do, then you just feel like giving up. I mean, you don't mind trying. You spend most... These things are beyond your control. You've done the very best you could. <laughs> you can sit down. There's something I want to say. Thank you. Now, I understand everything you say. But I think it's important to distinguish between the more or less ordinary parental problems and this. Yes, she's tried to kill herself. Not because of anything you've done or not done, but because of something she's done. It may not even be very rational. She's sick and she needs help. Not the limited kind that I can give her, or even what you can do. She needs to go away for a little, to be with people she doesn't know. Strangers who make no demands upon her, and upon whom she makes no demands. And then perhaps she'll be able to come to terms with it all. Where? What kind of people? Some people I know who will be very understanding. <laughs> Something for your scrap, Brannick. Redresses if you passed wrong. That's a prescription for war, is it? Well, yes, perhaps it is, but it makes up a bit for the humiliations of Versailles. Does it? It does, Ethelbert. 
told your people, have you, about your promotion? Yes, I have. Ah, haven't had a chance yet to tell mine. Thank you. <laughs> the Commander-in-Chief and his reception. He's decided against inviting civilians. Indeed. And he wants it to be held at an hotel. Really? Uh, does the general suggest which one? The Normandy. Something of a vote for us for him. Hmm. Uh, does the general suggest when? In one week's time. How best? I am acquainted with the manager of the Normandie. Would you like me to discuss arrangements? It's very considerate of you, Heineke. Not at all, or best. It would be a pleasure. Obviously, you're not expecting visitors so early, Mr. Messerby. Your front door's still locked. Yes, a little early. What can I do for you, Major Running? A uh, business matter, uh, Mr. Messerby. I'm here on behalf of the Commandant. Any way I can assist you, no, I will, Major. Would you be able to accommodate a reception? A function? A social function? Yes. Or roughly how many? 30 or 40? I'm sure we can. We will supply the spirit. You still have some wine? I'm sure we can find something. But uh, canopy, I'm afraid. Oh, no, no, we will supply those also, and music. And I'm sure we can look after you very well. Good. What day, Major? Next Friday. Splendid, Major Rannikham. I'll show you out the front way. It, what, what are these? Dusting plots, Major. Still have the dust even in wartime. <laughs> dusting plots. Strange. They remind me of something. Just plots. You have more early morning visitors. Kitchen staff. I'll deal with them in a moment. Good morning, Captain Foster Smart. Sit down. Why have I been brought to this office? You don't know. Well, if I did, I wouldn't ask. And I'm waiting for an answer. You're an arrogant man, Herr Foster Smythe. Beware you do not fall victim and to it. And you are an impudent man, and I shall report you to your senior officer. Now, I ask you again. I came here to see the Feld Commandant on official what business. What was the purpose Why? of your visit this morning to the cold storage depot? I was asked to deliver a message to Bishar, the manager. By whom? His wife. They are not on the phone. But you are. And yet, you must have left the second curfew was lifted in order to arrive there at the time you did. Why did you not telephone? Can I help you, Herr Stormbankura? Uh, no, no, continue, Oberleutnant. 
You were about to tell me why you could not telephone the man Bishar at the cold storage depot this morning. On a matter of such evident urgency, why did you have to go there? My phone was out of order. I should warn you, Herr Foster Smythe, I've already inquired about your phone. Then I shall say no more. On the grounds that it may incriminate you. I believe the Americans call it pleading the Fifth Amendment. You're very wise to do so, Herr Foster Smythe. Uh, forgive me, Herr Oberleutnant. Uh, when was all this? This morning. Early? Yes. I cannot think why Captain Foster Smythe does not say. He was on an errand to the Hotel Normandy. I was there myself. He had some polishing cloths to deliver. Well, they were cloths, certainly, and to be used for polishing, or so I was told. So, presumably, polishing cloths. No doubt the cold storage depot was on his route. Is that not so, Captain Foster Smythe? If you say so. There. And I say something else. I think that the captain will find it unnecessary to pass the cold storage depot in future. Is that not so, Captain? If you say so. Good. Uh, Foster Smythe, I think you're indeed a fortunate man not to have been caught red-handed. Next time you will not be so lucky. You didn't mind me having second thoughts, Richter. Only too happy, sir. This place is a very good choice. Yes, makes a bit of a change from the mess, I think. Decided against civilians, though. Not really a great deal in common. Except being in Guernsey. Right. General, gentlemen, everything to your satisfaction. Capital, Mr. B. Capital. Splendid. I'm sure you must have quite enough polishing cloths to last for a long time. It would be such a pity if the Hotel Normandy were forced to close its doors, don't you think? Drink up your milk. 